Good to have you with us on GMT. Time to catch up with Aaron, who's got more on our top story today. The Qatar crisis, Aaron. Yeah, tiny Gulf state, what, uh, 2.7 million people, but really feeling it, Lucy, at the moment. Hello there, yep, those economic sanctions imposed by the Gulf states, as I said, taking, a, uh, or really having an impact. Uh, we know that Qatar's shares, its stock markets, trading at 18-month lows. There are also reports that the country's central bank is suspending its monthly debt auction. And even here in the UK, Qatar's currency, the real, can't be bought by customers of some of the country's biggest bank branches. It, that, well, that includes Barclays, Royal Bank of Scotland and Lloyds. The banks have blamed a third-party supplier who said that they've stopped providing that currency. Let's get more. Ghanem Nusebe is an economic risk analyst focusing on the Gulf, also founder of Cornerstone Global. Uh, Ghanem, great to have you with us. Let's start with the economic impact. I mean, yes. do we know much at the moment? Because one of the, the worries that we were talking about at first was that uh, Qatar may have to dip into its sovereign wealth fund, basically its big piggy bait. Absolutely, and I think they've started doing that for two reasons. They need to make sure that the currency stays afloat, mm. otherwise the, the exchange rate is just going to be one official exchange rate and an unofficial black market exchange rate. And they need to make sure that the currency stays afloat by ensuring there are enough foreign reserves in Qatari banks. Right, so the foreign reserves, like any country, they hold, it's the supports, it's crucial because it supports their currency. Precisely. If so, well, okay, well, while we're on currency, I mean, yes. what is it about, the, like the banks here so who, are, who stop trading, we have to stop dealing the reals to tourists and, yes. and business people, but the banks here are saying it's not us, it's the third party supplier that provides us with the real cash. Is well, that it's, it's a chain, I mean it's a chain, the availability of the real, but no one wants to carry a currency that might say, be a hot, hot potato, you don't want the, uh, the currency to crash. You mean all of a sudden you're, you're holding, holding, you know, a thousand dollars worth and it goes Exactly. False, right. Well, it's already dropped uh, into a 30 year low anyway, wow. and, and, and it's a pegged currency, so that we're not talking about the double digit drop. But I think, I think with time, you're going to see a currency that might just go into freefall if they're not able to uh, cushion it for such a long time, depending gotcha. on how Gotcha. So that's okay. So something to keep our eyes on, a big worry. Uh, we also know that when the, this all kicked in, 90% uh, of Qatar's food came across the land of the border of Saudi. Yes. Saudi shut those gates. Now we know it's the likes of Iran and Turkey supplying Qatar with as much food and, and goods as it, it needs. But at a higher cost, right? It's Absolutely. more expensive. Absolutely. The, the material is much more expensive and the transport is much more expensive because now you're getting uh, food being flown in, uh, coming through uh, faraway ports. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a lot of inflation. When the next quarterly inflation reports come in and so on, we're going to see probably inflation going through the roof. Right. So the prices that Qataris are paying is, 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 is inevitable. It's going up. It, it, it's already gone up and we still don't have the numbers, but it is going up dramatically, yes. Okay. Uh... There's talk about, we've, we know that there's an extension, right? We've got that 48-hour extension. But the likes of Saudi and Egypt and the U United Arab Emirates are saying, if you don't come to the table and agree to our conditions, we could imply, impose further sanctions. I'm wondering, they're pretty much cut them off at the moment from every, nearly everything. What, what other sanctions could we see? Um, well, you could see um, Gulf money being taken out of Qatari banks. That would, could put even more pressure on the Qatari economy. Wow. Um, um, the, you know, you're talking about a significant proportion of what the Qatari banks hold are from the three uh, GCC countries. Okay. You could see secondary um, boycotts that might be applied gradually. You might see companies, for example, British companies based in Dubai might be providing services to Qatari clients that might not be possible in the future. It's already very difficult. So that would put, you know, put pressure on companies who want to work with the GCC and Qatar. It might, people might have to make a choice. Given the picture you're painting, it does sound, I mean, we've had these little spats, well, little spats before, nothing to this level, but uh, a poli uh, diplomatic spats, right, where these countries, Saudi, etc., have removed their ambassadors, they've put them back in, but it does seem this particular row, uh, with the likes of the, those countries imposing these sanctions, are really digging in for the, for the long term, and if we're already seeing the impact on Qatar now, Qatar couldn't aff can't afford to continue fighting this, can it? No, it can't, and you're, you're absolutely right. Even if there are no increase of sa sanctions, even if you keep the current sanctions in, I don't think Qatar could take it for much longer. I think you'll have a total economic collapse. So, so Qatar could not, uh, is a country that really relies on its neighbours. Mm. If it's not going to rely on its neighbours, can it rely on Iran and Turkey for the long term? That's a very, very difficult question to answer. Yeah, and we have about 30 seconds. You mentioned mm. the neighbours and, and Iran. Um, uh, these countries aren't asking Qatar, it's interesting, because they're not asking Qatar
to stop trading with Iran. I mean, countries around the world are lining up to trade with Iran. They're not asking Qatar to stop, but they're asking them to stop a certain dialogue with Iran. Exactly. No one, no one in the GCC is asking Qatar to uh, stop trading with Iran. They're asking them to stop collaborating on issues like related to terrorism, security, and military. But no one wants Qatar to stop dealing with Iran, and that's, okay. that's a key, key issue here. Ghanem Nusay Bay, we appreciate. Thanks very much for your input. Stay right there. I'm going to wrap up the, the business news very shortly, but we're going to leave you with a couple of other stories making headlines all around.